In this lesson, we're looking specifically at DNA replication, which is part of cellular replication as well. All right, DNA is the master code which decides the structure and function of every single cell in an organism. So it carries all the information needed for new cells, new generations of offspring as well. When cells divide, also known as multiplying, then this genetic information needs to go too. So cells have to replicate their DNA accurately so that the new cells produced have the full set of instructions to continue to function. So be it a single cellular organism or a specialized cell within a multicellular organism. Cells have a cell cycle which is similar to a complex organism's life cycle and they undergo different stages in response to different needs. So cells are created via replication processes, they grow, they function and they themselves undergo division. So new cells are actually created to avoid growing really large. Recall that it's preferable to have many small cells with high surface area to volume ratio uh, than large cells with small surface area to volume ratio. They are created to grow an entire a multicellular organism larger in size or provide them with specialized types of cells. Uh, new cells replace damaged cells and they also maintain tissue integrity um, you know, in a functioning organism. Now the cell cycle has a few main parts. Interphase, right? Interphase is basically all of that circle there. Uh, mitosis, which is just this tiny section, and cytokinesis, which is part of mitosis. In interphase, the cell is preparing for normal functioning, right? It's managing normal functioning or it's preparing for growth, so that mitosis phase. In G1, this is where active growth is happening. In S phase, this is synthesis where DNA is replicated and G2 is preparation for that mitosis phase or that uh, dividing. So the cell can vary how long it's in interphase for. Slow growing cells like liver cells uh, might be in interphase for years, whilst others may only stay in interphase for a couple of days. Mitosis occurs next after that interphase uh, where the nucleus divides and then eventually cytokinesis is that final stage where the remainder of the cytoplasm also divides and the organelles are moved into two new cells. Now our focus on DNA replication is that S phase, right? This little bit here, S for synthesis, uh, where DNA within the eukaryotic nucleus is replicated. So DNA replication is the process where a parent cell uh, makes exact copies of the DNA to give to both daughter cells. So it needs to give that a complete and identical set of genetic information. So there's no loss. Each parent strand is used as a template and the other side of the ladder of the DNA double helix is created. So DNA replication is considered to be semi-conservative because one of the parent strands is partnered up with a new complementary strand and moves into the daughter cell. So it's keeping some and getting some new. So before we go through these steps, it's important to remember that DNA within the nucleus is incredibly tightly packed down. So DNA, is, DNA replication is no easy feat. First, the DNA strand must be unwound and slightly, you know, unwound slightly, not the whole thing, just bits of it, and then unzipped. And an enzyme known as DNA helicase or helicase actually unwinds it and breaks down the hydrogen bonds between the base pairs. So what this does, it actually exposes the nitrogenous bases and creates what's called a replication fork. Now, because of that really tightly wound packaging of the DNA, the replication fork is only opening up a very small section of the DNA at any given time. So as helicase moves the replication fork down the DNA molecule, another enzyme known as DNA polymerase follows along on one of the parent strands. So it freely pulls in, pulls in free nucleotides to attach to the complementary bases, pairing them up in that normal way we would see A to T and G to C. So it matches, you know, based on that parent template strand. And it, um, the DNA polymerase is incredibly accurate at matching complementary base pairs. So even if it makes a mistake, which is estimated to be about one in every 10 billion base pairs, it has the ability to proofread and then correct itself. So if there's still issues later on down the process, other enzymes will actually finish this off and do their own corrections before it re-zips up the DNA molecule. Now, as helicase moves along to unwind the DNA, DNA polymerase is reading in the same direction, okay? DNA polymerase can only read the parent strand from three prime to five prime because it's building the new DNA strand from five prime to three prime. 
So this is what's happening on one strand. It's known as the leading strand because it's replicated continuously in the same way that the replication fork is moving. The other parent strand is a little bit more fiddly. So because DNA polymerase can only read the template strand from 3' prime to 5' prime, on the opposite strand, it's known as the lagging strand. It has to work in small chunks as it goes. So once the replication fork opens up, the enzyme attaches close to the fork and it actually moves away from it. Okay, And the parent fork continues to open up uh, just that little bit as it will reattach again and make another small section of DNA. And the replication is discontinuous. And these tiny little segments are known as Okazaki fragments. They're about 100 to 200 base pairs long. So when you put it all together, you can see that the top strand here is building 5' prime to 3' prime with the way that the DNA is unzipping, while the strand at the bottom, the lagging strand, it's creating those Okazaki fragments 5' prime to 3' prime as well, but it's going in the opposite direction. So the first one would be created here, and then it would, oops, pardon me, it would move back to the left with those other ones. So it sort of plays catch up in short little bursts. Eventually, other enzymes move in and the newly created DNA strand is checked for errors and base pair matching and to make sure the molecules are all bonded together. So those bases need to be hydrogen bonded back together and the replication is essentially complete. So there's two new DNA strands are now present, uh, but each one is retaining one strand from the parent and one newly formed strand. So it really is a truly stunning process. It's occurring at around 50 base pairs per second. And it's incredible how accurate the process actually is and that there are checks and balances in there to fix errors that do occur. So when you think this could be happening to th you know, the 3.2 billion base pairs across your 46 chromosomes in any of your 15 trillion cells, the accuracy at which this process occurs is really stunning. So this is part of our cellular replication information, really important to understand the roles of helicase and DNA polymerase.